Well, good morning, everybody. It's Tom Christie back in the carving shop, and this will be the final session in the carving uh, Golden Eye Drake series. This will be session six. Today, we're going to do some finished sanding. We'll get the bottom cleaned off, branded, and then we'll get the decoy sealed. I've really enjoyed putting this series together for you. I hope it's helpful uh, to those of you that are new and want to begin carving and try your hand at decoy carving. Also to those of you that have been carving for a while, it never hurts to see how somebody else does something. and We can share those experiences. So let's get going on the golden eye drape. Just gonna use a roll of Swiss sandpaper. This is 80 grit, but it's a well used 80 grit. So it doesn't have as much bite as it used to. And I'm just going to go around the neck joint, knock off any loose material and blend the neck into the body. And I'm pretty happy with the way this neck joint is coming out. Sometimes you have to go back and uh, the plastic wood tends to have a little shrinkage. And if you don't have enough on, you might see the seam and you have to go back and reinforce it. But I think on this particular decoy, it looks like it's covered well. So I'll get that done and then we'll move to the next step. By the way, I like to do my finished sanding in strong light, so just uh, up close and it, it helps you identify little rough spots that you might not see otherwise with that strong light overhead. I'll spend a little bit of time doing some finished sanding, not with 80 grit, but we'll go to lighter 320 and just uh, do some finished sanding after I get the rough sanding done. All right, I spoke too soon. I have one little spot here that I wanna deal with, and I hope you can see that in the light. There's just a little bit of a ridge there. The rest of it looks great, but I'm gonna take the time to Go back and put just a thin coat of the plastic wood in that area, let it dry and re-sand because this is all going to be white and I don't want anything breaking up the nice line from the neck to the breast. The other side looks great. I'm just going to deal with that right now and I'll be happier later and you will be too. If you see a neck joint like that, take care of it before you start painting. Quick shot with that uh, covered up and then I'll do a light sanding and we'll be done. I'm going to use my belt sander now to smooth the bottom of the decoy and uh, when I do the original tracing on the block of wood from the pattern I always leave about an eighth of an inch of depth for this purpose because you take some wood off as you're flattening the tupelo so I want to make sure I don't take too much off from the pattern. This, this basically gets me back to the pattern. That looks pretty good. Now I'll do a light sanding over the body um, just to finish sand it. And I always try to hit the edges so that there's not a razor sharp edge there between the side pockets and the uh, bottom of the bird. I'm just going back over the decoy one more time and I've got a little hand tool. A lot of people have asked me where I got this and I got it so long ago I'm not sure but I think you can get these at James Company or on Amazon. They're a uh, burr holder and uh, you can put a different bit in each end which is kind of nice. But I'm going through these splits and just softening things up a little bit where where it's needed and I'm just doing a once-over to look at any areas that need to be cleaned up 
before we seal the decoy up because I don't want to do any carving work after the sealer starts to go on for obvious reasons. As a final step before sealing, I like to put a brand on my decoys. It's just kind of a maker's mark. And, uh, it's a permanent mark to identify you as the maker of this particular decoy. All right, I got that neck joint taken care of. Much happier with that. And then in that final walkthrough, I probably found 20 little items that needed to be taken care of, including a couple of places on the face that I just felt like I could see a little bit of the plastic woodwork and I don't want to have to deal with that later. So I think I learned that from looking at Jet Bernays' work. Uh, Jet is so meticulous and so clean in what he does. It's just amazing. And I think people have commented that my birds are clean. This is a big part of that process. I do this in the carving and then also again in the painting when it's complete. Just go over it with a fine tooth comb that's not rocket science, I know. You probably do that already. But for those newer carvers out there, particularly if you're going to compete, attention to detail is critical. And it just might be what sets your bird apart from the 20 other birds in the tank, along with your colors and your shapes. Now I'm going to seal the bird, and I use deft semi-gloss and uh, it soaks into the wood well. And I normally give the bird, uh, depending on its application, if it's gonna go on the shelf and not be in the water like in a competition, you can get away with uh, less coats, but I normally go four or five coats in competition birds, particularly on the bottom, it's gonna be exposed to water. Once that sealer has the chance to dry well, I'm masking off the bottom of the bird you can see to protect the wood down there, and I'm going to use a spray primer, gray primer, just to coat the bird. Normally a couple of good coats is all it takes, and then I'll let that dry well before I do any painting on top of the primer. Just as a note, I like to use a respirator when I spray in my shop just to protect my lungs. Here's just a quick close-up of the primed bird. It's still wet. I'll give you a couple of views for your reference. See from the back how rounded the body is. Just another quick angle from the front. And the top down. Here's the opposite side. Well, that's a wrap on the Golden Eye Drake carving series. We've got the bird painted or primed, and now I'll move to painting tomorrow after the primer has a chance to dry. I do plan to put a full length painting video, how to, step by step, all colors, etc., for this bird. And I'll have that available for sale on my website, tomchristiart.com, along with 11 other painting videos that you might want to check out. Um, I've enjoyed carving this bird with you. Again, I hope it's helpful to those of you that uh, are carvers or want to be carvers. And I look forward to the next project together. This is Tom Christie signing out. Good carving to all of you.